welcome to the Geomesta channel. Today's lesson takes a little deeper look into two types of quadrilaterals. We're going to be talking trapezoids and kites, the two non-parallelogram quadrilaterals. For a general overview of all types of quadrilaterals, head over to this video here uh, to get some basic definitions before you start. If you want to follow along with this video, go down to the description and click the link to the guided notes worksheet, print it off, write some things down, and follow along. All right, jumping right in, we're gonna get a quick reminder of the definition of a trapezoid, which is um, a quadrilateral with exactly one pair of parallel sides. So we've got parallel sides here. And a special type of trapezoid is what we call the isosceles trapezoid, uh, which looks like this. And the isosceles trapezoid is a trapezoid where the non-parallel sides are congruent. This is the one we're going to dig into today. Okay, so the first property that we're going to talk about with the isosceles trapezoid is that the base angles, okay, the base angles are congruent to one another. Now, the bases of a trapezoid are the two parallel sides. Um, we use this terminology when we talk about um, the area formula for a trapezoid, so you'll hear this a couple different ways. Um, but the bases are the two non-parallel sides. Therefore, the base angles are the two angles that lie on each um, side. So these two would be a pair of base angles and these two would be a pair of base angles. And it might seem obvious because you have a line of symmetry that goes right down through the middle that you could kind of reflect this thing over onto itself and those pairs of angles would match up making them congruent but we're going to go ahead and prove it um, in a different way. So what we're going to do to prove that the base angles here are congruent is we're going to draw um, a little line here. I'm going to draw a line. Let's go ahead and put some points. So we've got A, B, C, and D. So we're going to draw a line, and the line I'm going to draw is going to be a line that's parallel to BC, starting at A, and coming down here. I'm going to call that point E. Okay, now point E um, creates a parallelogram here. So I got A, B, C, E, we got a parallelogram and then a triangle. Now we know that parallelograms have opposite sides that are congruent. So BC and AE, because these are parallel, making it a parallelogram, I also know that these two opposite sides are congruent. Okay, so AE is gonna be congruent to BC. Notice that AE is also congruent to, to AD, making this an isosceles triangle. Okay, because this is an isosceles triangle, I know that the base angles in an isosceles triangle are congruent. I can mark those two. So angle D right here, angle AED right here, these are the same. And I also know that because we have this parallelogram over here, knowing that these are parallel to one another, I've got corresponding angles. Okay, so I've got parallel lines, I've got a transversal. Corresponding angles, meaning this angle AED, I can slide that over into the position here at angle C. Corresponding angles are always congruent when lines are parallel. Okay, so what I've got is I've got angle D is congruent to angle E. I've got angle C is congruent to angle E. Therefore, angle D and angle C must be congruent to each other. Okay, so there's your first pair of base angles. Angle D has to be congruent to angle C. Now here at the top, I'm gonna kind of erase this line here. Here at the top, these two base angles I can show that these are the same because I've got, um, again, parallel lines. I've got a transversal. We know that same side interior angles always have to be supplementary to one another. So angle D and angle A are gonna have to add up to 180 degrees. Just like over here, these two same side interior angles also have to add up to 180 degrees. And because A and B are both gonna be supplementary to the same angle or congruent angles, I know that by the congruent supplements theorem that those two angles have to be congruent. So again, angle D and angle A have to add up to 180. Angle B and angle C have to add up to 180. But if D and C are the same, A and B also have to be the same. Okay, so that gives us congruent pairs of base angles. That's property number one. Okay, property number two for the isosceles trapezoid. is that the diagonals of an isosceles trapezoid are gonna be congruent. Okay, 
So the diagonals are, again, lines that connect to non-adjacent vertices, look like this. Go ahead and write in my information for the isosceles trapezoid that those are congruent. These are parallel. Okay, so this property says the diagonals AC and DB, okay, those are gonna be congruent to one another. Now to prove this, we've done this before when we had um, the property about rectangles that the diagonals of a rectangle are also congruent. It's the same proof. Okay, what you have is you've got two triangles here that kind of overlap. So I've got a triangle ADC, this blue triangle right there. You've got a second triangle BDC, which overlaps the first right here. And what we know about these two triangles is that they're congruent to one another. To, to prove that, you've got um, AD is congruent to BC already because it's the opposite sides, the non-parallel sides of the isosceles trapezoid. We know by definition those are the same. And both triangles share this segment uh, DC down at the bottom, so I can mark that segment congruent to itself by the reflexive property. And then we just said that the base angles of an isosceles trapezoid are congruent, we just proved that. So I know that this whole angle here and this whole angle here, so the whole angle at DADC and BCD, those two angles are the same. If you can kind of think about these two triangles separated, they would have a side, an angle, and a side marked congruent, just like here, you'd have a side, an angle, and a side. Okay, so these two triangles, the blue triangle and the green triangle, they are congruent by side, angle, side. And if the triangles are congruent, that means all their corresponding parts are also congruent, that's CPT, CPCTC. So I know that AC, okay, the longer side of this triangle in the blue, and then BD, the longer triangle, or longer side of that triangle in the green, those would be congruent by CPCTC, and those are the diagonals. Okay, so that's property number two, the diagonals of an isosceles trapezoid, AC, BD. Those will always be congruent. All right, let's move over to the kite. Again, a reminder, a kite is the quadrilateral, I'm so bad at drawing kites. Kite's a quadrilateral that has no parallel sides. Something like that. So no parallel sides. The definition says a kite will have two non-adjacent congruent sides, or sorry, adjacent congruent sides, kind of backwards. So congruent adjacent sides, not opposite sides, but adjacent, so next to each other, these two are the, uh, are the same, and then these two down here are also the same. So that's the definition of a kite, a quadrilateral with two pairs of adjacent sides congruent. Now we've only got one property that we're gonna talk about with the kite, and it's gonna have to do with the diagonals once again. So if I draw the diagonals of the kite, which would be here and here. And the property that we're gonna look at with uh, the kite here is that the diagonals are perpendicular to one another. Okay, so the diagonals are perpendicular. What does that mean? That means they cross at 90 degree angles. Now there's a couple different ways to prove this. One way is this idea um, of equidistance. I'm gonna get some points here. Let's say A, B, C, D. Okay, so because A and C are both equidistant to D and B. Okay, so again, what that means is that A is the same distance away from D as it is to B, and we know that because of these two congruent sides. So A is equidistant to D and to B, just like C is equidistant to D and to B. And because they are equidistant to those points, the converse of the perpendicular bisector theorem says that A must lie on the perpendicular bisector of segment DB. Okay, think about why that makes sense. If I connect the segment D, B, because A is equidistant to both D and B, point A must lie on the line that goes through the midpoint of DB, crossing it at 90 degrees. Okay, and I can say the same thing for C. Because C is equidistant to D and to B, I know that point C also must lie on the perpendicular bisector of DB. Okay, so if A and C both have to lie on the perpendicular bisector of DB, and there's only one line that goes through any two points, I know that that segment right there, AC, is the perpendicular bisector of DB, meaning that it crosses DB at its midpoint, and it will cross it at a 90 degree angle, making it perpendicular. 
Okay, so for that reason, in a kite, the diagonals will always be perpendicular to one another. There's your 90 degree angle right there. All right, so let's do a couple of examples. We'll start with a gimme here. So this is the isosceles trapezoid. Markings, parallel side. Non-parallel sides are congruent. Let's say we've got a 65 degree angle down here at the bottom and we're looking for these other angles. Okay, so once again, think about what we know about the isosceles trapezoid, think about congruent parts, think about the properties that we talked about. And that first property is gonna be the one that's gonna help us out here. So again, the base angles of an isosceles trapezoid are congruent, which means that these two angles are the same, these two angles are the same. Okay, so once again, with your line of symmetry down the middle, we've really only got two different angle measures here. So four angles, but two different angle measures. If this angle down here is 65, the other base angle here, so the measure of angle three, oops, the measure of angle three is also gonna be 65 degrees. Okay, so angle three is 65. Now, to get from one base to the other base, don't forget that these are parallel. So we've got these same side interior angles here. You've got the same side interior angles here. Again, we know the angle one and angle two, so the measure of angle one and angle two, they're gonna be the same. To get there, we just have to subtract from 180 degrees. Again, these are supplementary. They have to add up to 180. So if I take 180 minus 65, we get angle one and angle two, which is 115. Okay. So those are real quick, real simple ones. Okay, another isosceles trapezoid example. Oh, we'll do a little algebra here, just a real quick one. Oh, blue. All right, so W, X, Y, and Z. And we'll draw the diagonals like so. We'll say that segment WY is 3x minus 3. So this diagonal here has length 3x minus 3. And then diagonal ZX is going to be length x plus 5. Okay, so the question is going to be, what is the length of diagonal WI and the length of diagonal ZX? We want to know what those lengths are. We've got expressions for each of those lengths. What we're gonna do is we're gonna set up an equation to figure out how we can relate these two together, solve for the variable, and then plug back in to figure out these lengths. Okay, in this case, we know that wy and zx are the diagonals, which we know they are congruent. That was property number two for the isosceles trapezoid. And anytime two things are congruent to one another, um, in algebra, if I have an expression, we know we can set those things equal to one another. So I know that this segment and this segment are the same. We can write it as 3x minus 3 must be equal to x plus 5. Okay, if they're congruent, they're equal. So some quick algebra here. Um, get all the variables to one side of the equation. We've got 1x over here. I'm going to subtract 1x from both sides. I'm going to move my constant. I've got this minus 3. I'm going to add 3 to move it to the other side. So 3x minus 1x is 2x. Negative 3, positive 3 is gone. Positive x, negative x is gone. 5 plus 3 is 8. If 2x is 8, I know that x has to be 4. Okay, so we've got x equals 4. Now again, the question was, what is the length of each diagonal? x is 4, but what is the length of wy? What is the length of zx? To figure that out, we're just going to take that x, we're going to come over here, and we're going to plug it into these two expressions. Okay, so wy and zx. Now really, we only have to plug it into one of these because I know they are the same, but just to double check, we'll plug it into both. Start with the easy one here. If x is four, plug in a four right there. Four plus five is nine. Three times four is 12. 12 minus three is also nine. So we do know that they are equal. All right. Move over to the kites. little bit 
steeper on my diagonal there. All right, so we've got a kite. Go ahead and put the diagonals in. And we're just gonna find a whole bunch of angles here. So let's say angle one. Um, we'll go two, three, four. And the angles I'm gonna give you are here, 55 degrees. And we'll go 38 degrees down here. Okay, so we got four angles missing, one, two, three, and four. And then the two angles that we have known here are 55 and 38. All right, so starting with the fact again that a um, kite has perpendicular diagonals, I think angle four is the quickest, easiest because we know here in the middle where these two diagonals intersect, that angle four has gotta be 90 degrees. So the measure of angle four is 90. That's gonna be a right angle. And it's not just angle four, it's all these. So all these are gonna be 90 degree angles. That includes angle four. Now what we have here are four right triangles. We've got this one line of symmetry down the middle. I know that these two triangles and these two triangles are the same. So all the angles in this one that match up here are equal. The angles here are gonna match up with this one. So knowing that, I can go right down here and say that angle two and angle 38, those are, or the 38 degree angle, those are gonna be the same. So angle two, measure of angle two, that's gonna be 38. So 90, this is 38. Now I've got these two, so angle one and angle three. These are not the same, again, um, with a kite, you don't. We only have the one line of symmetry. This diagonal is not gonna be a line of symmetry. So one and three aren't gonna be the same, but I can use the fact that I've got a right triangle here. I've got 90 degrees, I've got 55 degrees, and then angle one, all three of those, just like with any triangle, have to add up to 180. So if I add the 90 and the 55, which is 145, I can subtract from uh, 180 and you're gonna get a 35 degree angle for angle one. So measure of angle one is 35. So 180 minus 45 is 35. I'm gonna do the same thing to get angle three. This time I'm gonna use the 38 degree angle and the 90 degree angle. All three of those have to add up to 180 as well. So if I add the 90 and the 38, subtract that from 180, you're gonna get your answer for angle three. That's gonna be, uh, that's gonna be 52. So angle one's 35, angle three, 52. 2 is 38, and 4 is 90. Well, let's do one more. A little bonus example here. So let's do a kite without the diagonals. Lovely kite. Okay, so let's say uh, we got a 42 degree angle. Let's say that this here is 90 and we're missing these two. Okay, so I've got my kite turned on its side, so these are the same, these are the same. So again, if we think about where the line of symmetry is, it goes right down through the middle. I've got 90 here, 42 here, these two are missing, and with that line of symmetry down the middle, I know I can fold, I can reflect this over, these two are gonna be the same. Angle one and angle two are congruent. Okay, the question is how we're gonna get them. One option is we can draw a diagonal here. I know that that diagonal um, being a line of symmetry, we'll split the 40 or split the 90 into 45 and 45. It'll split the 42 into 21 and 21. I can use triangles to do it, uh, but that's going to be longer than um, going this route. Any quadrilateral, the total sum of the angles in any quadrilateral is always 360 degrees. Okay, always 360. Since I know these are the same, what I can do is I can add the two that I have. I've got the 90 and the 42. Which if I add that, it's going to be 132. I can subtract that from 360. Okay, so whatever's left is going to be um, shared between these two angles. So if I take 360 minus the 132, that's going to give me uh, 228. So I've got 228 degrees between these two angles, but because of the same, what can I do? Just cut it in half, divide it by two. So if I take 228, divide that by two, it's gonna leave me with measure of angle one and angle two. Half of 228 is 114. 114 degrees for one and two. Alrighty, there you have it. So that is the story on trapezoids and kites, specifically the isosceles trapezoid. Appreciate you watching. Thank you for 
um, staying with me here. If you liked this and it was helpful, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel if these are helpful for you. Feel free to share it if you know anybody else that would benefit from it as well. We'll see you next time. Thanks.